Blessed is he who comes. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. Amen. Galatians 6. Let's begin our reading from verse 7. 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, Okay, it says, be not deceived. Starts with a very disturbing expression. Be not deceived. What is the deception? God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, you are at liberty to sow anything it says, provided you are prepared to also reap the harvest whatsoever a man sows he says that not another that he shall reap that means when you sow something and reap another it is deception and he says do not let anyone deceive you god is not mocked the principle he built is so powerful that whatsoever a man soweth provided it was a man that sowed it he says that shall hear it then it gives it a context now that is important for our discussion tonight verse 8 for he that soweth remember the context we're dealing with sowing he that soweth to his flesh based on the fact that god cannot be mocked are we together now he that soweth to his flesh the bible says he shall of the flesh reap corruption the word corruption there is destruction. It says, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Are we following this discussion now? So Paul is teaching the church in Galatia and he said, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. That whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. And he says that you can sow to the flesh and to the spirit and in any case there is a harvest waiting for you are we together let's look at verse 9 it says and let us not be weary in well doing knowing what was aforementioned now it says do not be weary that means that revelation should give you an energy that everything you are doing if right it says we will reap in due season that means the energy that we derive in this kingdom is not mechanical is based upon a revelation are we together the energy that drives a believer to bend over backwards even at uncomfortable times when you see people serve god whether it is convenient or not when you see people give when you pe see people serve in church when you see ministers and leaders pour themselves out number one it is because they love god but in addition to that, the Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth. So let's discuss a few things now. Number one, this scripture tells us that all men are farmers. Whether you are aware of it or not, the Bible says all men sow. The issue is not whether you are sowing or not. We want to examine the whatsoever you have been sowing. Because there are many results today that we are having in our lives that is not necessarily demonic. It followed the protocol of God's integrity. The Bible says that if a man sows, that man will reap. Are we together? So all men are farmers. When you wake up in the morning, and sleep in the night you may call yourself a banker you may call yourself a man of god you may call yourself a civil servant you may call yourself a parent but here paul is giving us another angle of life and living that when you get up in the morning and sleep late in the night you can call the name of what you did whatever name it suits you but that in the realm of the spirit all you did that day was farming 
Are we together? That everybody sows. That is the first information that he gives us here. The Bible now tells us very interestingly that anything can be sown. This is dangerous. So everything around our lives can be a seed. Your thoughts can be a seed. Your actions can be seeds. Your intentions can be seeds. Look at the potency. You know, for many of us, we think that seeds, in, in another expression, the Bible says the seed is the word. You see? But it is not only the word that can be seeds. Here the Bible says whatsoever can be a seed. Please pay attention. If we are together, say amen. amen. So we've established the fact that number one, our possibilities in life are largely harvests. Please do not forget this. That the things that happen to us in life, whether it brings glory to Jesus and us, or it brings shame and degradation, the Bible is giving us an orientation from this point that there is a law that if that law fails, it is mockery on God. That means the very integrity of God is the force that maintains that law. And then it tells us that the generic name for seeds is whatsoever. Now, that is a disturbing revelation. Anything can become a seed. Wickedness can be a seed. Kindness can be a seed. Prayer can be a seed. More than an act, it is a seed. Benevolence can be a seed. Diligence can be a seed. Discipline can be a seed. Consecration can be a seed. Carelessness can be a seed. The Bible says whatsoever qualifies to be called a seed. Hmm. Whatsoever a man soweth. What kind of ground is so thirsty that it receives anything? Many of us here studied agriculture, at least at an elementary level, and they taught us that there are all kinds of soils. Am I right? Refresher course, loamy soil, what's the other one? Clay soil and... You are right. I don't even know what you said, but you are right. Are we together now? And we were told that certain crops do not grow well in certain soils. But here is the Bible introducing a kind of soil that anything sown on it can grow. Whatsoever a man soweth, he said, that man shall reap. The third thing we learn here is that as far as this context is concerned, there are two kinds of soils and that all of them, like I said, are very potent number one the flesh number two the spirit that the flesh and the spirit are both soils and can receive whatsoever and bring a harvest from them hallelujah so let me recap again so that i guide our understanding together number one our possibilities in life are largely harvests that the things that happen to us are usually outcomes that something plus something equal your condition right now are we together now and then that the bible tells us that everyone as far as destiny actualization and advancement is concerned is a farmer and that when we wake up in the morning and sleep in the night we are sowing then he tells us that beyond the seeds we know whatsoever can become seeds this one is a powerful one i don't want you to forget anything can become a seed that is the reason why anything grows including evil the moment you turn evil from an act to a seed you have given it the power to grow the moment you turn godliness from an act to a seed you have given it the power to grow 
the moment you turn money from profit to a seed you have given it the power to grow is that true a man carries seed but that seed does not grow within him there is an environment that seed gets to and suddenly in the woman it grows that man can carry that seed for many years but time does not make the seed to grow there is a condition the seed is looking for the moment it finds that condition it begins to grow and the bible now tells us that we can sow to the flesh believers listen and we can sow to the spirit everyone is given the liberty to choose you must sow for sure the only liberty you are given is to choose whether to sow to the flesh or to sow to the spirit then the bible says knowing this this is paul's charge let us not be wary that means weariness is derived from the fact that we do not understand that we are sowing and that there is a harvest that the consciousness of the fact that there is a harvest for every seed that is sown can take away weariness remember you're dealing with gaining momentum now strength is derived from light revelation that everything i am doing today i am sowing and that based on the integrity of god this is powerful now you understand why i started from verse 7 he said do not be deceived that means every time you see a man sowing love kindness generosity diligence in church for a while it will look like nothing is happening and the moment the devil wants to lie to you here comes his scripture do not be deceived god cannot be mocked let's say it god cannot one more time please there are children today no matter how rough and lawless they are they always seem to stumble into favor they don't pray yet somebody comes to help them they are stubborn yet they free them and arrest the person who is who was even innocent from the beginning and you will find out that once upon a time that person's mother was a cleaner in a church and for many years she never had an opportunity to build a house but one day the man of God spoke to her and said, I bless you to your third and fourth generation. She did not reap it, but do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. I'm prophesying to someone already because they have laughed at you. They, for you, the devil is even telling you this thing about serving God. Does it really pay? I bring you a prophetic word tonight. God cannot be mocked. Listen, if this is all you get tonight, carry it like a weapon, more than a salmon. Satan, what did you say this morning when I woke up? Now I have an answer for you. God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. Every great man you see and celebrate today, any farmer who is neat, and careful while farming is not a serious farmer did you hear what i said no matter how clean and hygienic a farmer is when you enter the farm you know you went there to do business with dirt and dust there is no farmer who tries to clean a stain quickly you are farming no sir they that sow in tears So there are indices that help us know that you are farming. Number one, the tears you are crying. Number two, the condition around your life that may not carry a semblance of glory. It says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. The Bible says it works in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Then it says for the things that are seen are temporal. Take your mind to a farm right now and let's see what happens when a farmer is farming. When you get to a farm with potential to produce a bumper harvest, all you will meet there is cow dung, all kinds of things. And the farmer laboriously begins to build ridges with blisters in his hand, yet he will not stop. Why won't he stop? He knows that whatsoever a man sows, 
sometimes he's farming and people pass him and say what a useless man are you aware that there are armed robbers that can steal crops it still will not stop him from farming even though he's aware that someone can jump into his farm he's still diligent enough to farm this is a prophetic word for someone for some of you listen you were doing well but simply because time did not seem to bring the result now the devil is lying to you that what you are doing is wrong some of you have made negative resolutions that this church thing i'm about to hang my boot i'm tired of people laughing at me and say where is the god that can give children you've been serving in church for five years god of vengeance has won my body for me god of miracles has won my battle for me i'm a winner man a winner man he's won my battle for me this will be somebody's song by the end of this year listen my rewarder has won my battle for me god my lifter has won my battle for me I'm a winner man I'm a winner man has won my battle for me do not be deceived God cannot be mocked scrubbing the toilets quietly and nobody is watching you God cannot be mocked praying for your pastor where he may never see you God cannot be mocked. Some of you are outside the gate right now standing while others are enjoying the service. God cannot be mocked. Some of you were here as early in the morning. You call yourself workers. God calls you farmers. Apostle, I've been here since 12. I'm even hungry. Don't worry. It's more than working in a workforce. God cannot be be mocked did you know that there is a name that God is called in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him is that in your Bible it says for he that cometh to God must come believing that he is a rewarder it's not just what he does it's a name a rewarder rewards rewards are not gifts no there is meritocracy tied to rewards and I sense in my spirit like never before that one of the things God is doing in the body of Christ in this season is coming as a rewarder there are men for many years they have served the Lord they have been mocked by others hear me I'm telling you this prophetically men and women there are families that do not have any comeliness there are men of god who have served and labored in the vineyard and any kind of physical reward may not have come i assure you the rewarder is coming the rewarder is coming and you see when he rewards if you give me a plate of food when i eat now in two three hours he's gone but there is something god can give a man that your children and your children's children can eat from whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap and then he says he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap except that he will reap destruction or corruption then he says he that sows to the spirit huh that he shall of the spirit reap life everlasting life everlasting i hope you know it's not just talking about heaven in the sweet by and by no life everlasting is a kind of realm is a quality of living john 10 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy that i am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly the translators made a mistake calling it everlasting life you may have heard me say everybody has everlasting life when you die that's not the end of your living we all have everlasting life what jesus came to give us 
and what he proposes to us even tonight is more than everlasting life it's a quality of living where the signature of the hand of god is upon your life it becomes clear to all and sundry the bible says he that cometh from above is above all But remember, don't miss what we're dealing with now. I share that thought and we'll pray tonight. So, our seeds can be whatsoever. If I greet you, good afternoon, sir. It can be an act of benevolence, but I can turn it to a seed. Are we together? Lord, I pray that you will increase David's Christian Center. And while you are praying quietly, you think you are just being a prayer warrior, but the realm of the Spirit is saying you are swaying. And based on the integrity of God, when the seeds begin to grow and produce fruit, there are things in your life that will be a testament. The Bible says, knowing this, verse 9 now, let us not be weary. Where does weariness come from? The fatigue, the awareness that what I am doing does not seem to carry any future consequence. The good that I'm doing does not seem to carry any positive response to me. It can cause weariness. But the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Does that look like a kind of seed? Remember our whatsoever concept. There is a kind of seed called well-doing. Don't be weary in it. For if you sow well-doing, it says we shall reap if we faint not. Now watch this. Many people keep mixing seeds the assignment of Satan, in fact, let me put it this way. Knowing that everyone sows, Satan cannot stop you from sowing. So what he does is to program a climate. Please listen carefully. Because he is the master of the sense realm. He will program a climate that compels you to consistently sow to the flesh. Are we together now? So you step in January 1st and while you are rejoicing, someone annoys you. And you say, who, who, who's, who am I going to kill? And while you are saying all those things, negative words, you are sowing. Are we together? And then he makes you become offended, maybe in your department. And you are saying, look, this is my head of department. I'm sick and tired of this. And you do not know. Satan knows how to make men sow. He can propose all kinds of things. Even for men of God, the last push and your breakthrough comes. The Bible says, if we faint not. If we faint not. Listen, if you're traveling from here, say to Abel Kuta, and it's 15 minutes for you to enter Abel Kuta, if you stop, did you get there? Would the road pity you because you went so close? This is how many people are some of you are just one obedience left one seed left one push left you started sowing for a long time and now you are about to give up just when you are close let us not be weary in well-doing it says for we will reap in due season if we faint Unfortunately, our world today prides itself in sowing to the flesh. And we wonder why things are not going all right with us. From the mismanagement of the media, the media space, social media and all forms. Are we together? To the laxity. Do you know that spiritual laziness is also a seed? Remember our whatsoever concept. So you get up in the morning plus Jesus minus Satan. That is a lazy laziness as a seed the bible says god is not mocked are we together lack of word study i feel like coming to church i'm not in a good mode today 
what pastor preached really hits my heart and I'm angry. Let me just manage my anger for two weeks. I'm, you see, all those kinds of things. Listen, 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 please. Please listen. Many of us right now are asking questions. Why is my life like this? God sent me to bring perspective. Just because you are sincerely sowing wrong seeds does not mean the soil will not receive them. If you make a mistake and delve into the lagoon, the lagoon will not pity you that it was a mistake. Just go back. If you do it intentionally, you will die. That mistake you may not leave to correct it, humanly speaking. There are many of us who do not understand this prophetic implication of seed and harvest. Are we together? So if somebody says you are stupid, he sowed his seed. If you reply and say you are stupid, you didn't just insult him, you sowed a seed too. So two of you now have seeds to deal with. Are we together now? It's like another person insulting you and you leave your own family and turn to him and you're talking. You will beg in harvest. Most of us have, the devil has used distraction to stop us from sowing noble and great and powerful seeds. You started well, spiritual vibrancy. You would get up and pray. I will tie a few things and then we'll pray. But God is calling you tonight. Except you want to live a frustrated life programming negative spiritual outcomes the bible calls us tonight to take responsibility knowing that god is a rewarder knowing that whatsoever can be seed that means it is my responsibility to partner with the holy spirit and begin to meticulously select the seeds that i sow knowing that all seeds grow number two it is also it, my responsibility to cry on to God to help me kill some seeds that may have sown because tonight we are not we are going to pray the prayer of mercy and say Lord there are some seeds if that harvest should come that is not going to be a good testimony help me and kill those seeds this is where the mercy of God comes negative seeds seeds of dishonor dishonor to leadership dishonor to your pastor i said it in the room he did not hear it the realm of the spirit received it whatsoever is a seed are we together giving god far below the blessing of the lord upon your life it's a seed you are sowing a seed that programs retrogression in the future this is not some manipulation the but remember do not be deceived. What are the channels that can deceive us? The media. Ignorant people who do not know the ways of God can come up with opinions that downplay the integrity of God and make you dwindle on something that is very noble that you are doing. Status quo can deceive. Everybody is doing it. It doesn't make it right. If you were in the days of Noah, you would probably miss the ark because everybody was insulting Noah. But did the rain come or not did they die or not only eight people so eight people in a whole nation can be right popular opinion does not necessarily mean god's opinion is someone learning i made up my mind that i'll be mindful of the seeds that i sow there are many people who start ministry and keep sowing wrong seeds by insulting those that God is helping you come to a great meeting like this and see wonderful things and say oh it's just I think they are just lucky seeds whatsoever what you are saying is my future reject increase anytime you see growth let it be that it was a mistake cancel it the realm of the spirit keeps honoring it you see a wealthy man you don't know how that man suffered you just say this corrupts people it's a seed the seed means anybody who blesses me, let it be redirected out of my life because there is no basis for that blessing. I know it sounds like I'm just playing, but this is powerful. Could it be that the summation of the events, the quality of your life right now, first spiritually speaking, and then to other aspects of your life, could it be that this is a painful harvest from wrong seeds that came? 
it's amazing that many people criticize the things they desperately desire they desire it and yet they do not sow into it positively you saw someone vibrant in prayer your prayer life is almost dead and you sow the wrong seed what is there about prayer the realm of the spirit says fine you continue until the day demonic forces just sit on you as if you are not existing David's Christian Center, the body of Christ, hear me. The seeds that we sow, Africa had been sowing seeds for a long time. And now, when the harvest came, we said, no, no, it's not for us. Life said, well, you have to receive what you have sown. Is that true? You change seasons by sowing another kind of seed. Another kind of seed. For someone, God is giving you a chance. Now, I don't mean to go into your past, but you sowed all kinds of wrong seeds, maybe dirty seeds. It was a continuation of seeds that came from those behind and you received that baton and you sowed negative, demonic, dangerous seeds. Tonight can be an opportunity for you to say, Lord, it can't be the way it happened to my father and my mother, but that's the same seed you're sowing. Are we together now? Yes. You can't put rice in the pot and then open the pot later and find curry there. No, sir. You can't put curry in a pot and open it later and find rice there. God is a miracle worker, not a magician. Listen to me, please. Is it true that your financial situation right now, as uncomfortable as it sounds, could it be that this is a harvest because God cannot be mocked? Could it be that dishonor and shame that is all around your life today, as sincere as you look, could it be that it is a harvest from wrong and negative seeds? I don't know about you, but knowing this, I now know that I have an assignment to number one ask God for mercy that all the seeds I have sown to the flesh so I, prayerlessness is a seed laxity spiritually is a seed becoming friends with purposeless visionless people as as sociologically comforting as that sounds is a seed that is programming a negative life are we together do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. I made up my mind when I saw this as a revelation and God gave me that I will sow seeds with honor. I may cry, but I will not stop sowing the seeds. When I get up in the morning and pray, there are seeds that I'm sowing. Planting it into the womb of the spirit. The Bible says if you sow to the spirit, you will reap life everlasting let me just show you five seeds and then we're done that i want you to sow five seeds as a challenge if you make up your mind to sow these seeds ladies and gentlemen people of god i give you a guarantee by the integrity of the word are you ready acts chapter 2 please let's start from verse 42 since whatsoever can be a seed i need to choose the whatsoever that is consistent with the matters of the spirit guess what the bible says and they continued steadfastly somebody say continued steadfastly the stamina to remain is based on this revelation starting is easy but continuing you see i understand your zeal for january but by june will you still be on fire it says they continued steadfastly in number one doctrine this time the apostles doctrine is the word instructions listening to instructions doctrine here represents the word of god in its entirety all the precepts that make for the stature and the maturity of the believer i can invest in the study of the word and it's a seed i am sowing in the spirit is someone learning now so you make up your mind that I'm going to sow seeds 
of spiritual intelligence i will invest in the word buy the truth he says and sell it not the truth is not cheap believe me it will cost you if you can find my teaching by the truth i taught you on the five currencies that buy the truth currency number one is hunger hunger is a currency that buys the truth currency number two is meekness and humility these are currencies that buy the truth you must commit yourself that in the name of Jesus I will immerse myself in the word as a farmer that is sowing diligently listen the days that we live in right now will not entertain spiritual ignorance spiritual ignorance can literally without exaggeration cost you your life many have been destroyed many have even died in an untimely way because they did not understand the power of the word of God listen please look up the Bible says you only arise and you shine to the degree to which your light comes you must make up your mind as a diligent farmer to invest in the word that is the first seed I want you to sow the seed of spiritual diligence in the word dig deep stay with God until the word of God the light of his word drives away ignorance from your life when you sow that seed let me tell you the truth there is no limit to how far you will rise and how far God will take you when you invest in the word hoping that you will rise just by luck is a joke many people do not invest in the word or casually invest in the world and then they want results of people with stamina no god cannot be mocked a student who reads for five minutes glossing through his notes would barely remember anything at all in the exam hall versus a student who is diligent studious as a covenant convenient or not except for other things like demonic interferences if not their results should not be the same so don't just this is the year that you will not just admire people and go back in jealousy and pain make up your mind you have your own farm too it's time to stop admiring someone else's farm and settle down to cultivate uh, there's a saying uh, your pastor would know that is an authority in that area they say the grass looks greener in the other side the question is who is the owner of that farm if the grass looks greener in the other side no grass no farm starts with green grass every farm starts with trouble there from all kinds of things plus wild animals it takes the diligence of a farmer blisters in his hands to clear them do everything plant ridges and then you plant something that grows and it becomes a source of admiration to all listen this year make up your mind to stop admiring other people's farms get to work and tell yourself in the name of Jesus Christ some of you have left your farm forever I know in agriculture there's what they call um, bush following is enough your own is enough get back and walk that thing let the beauty and the glory of Jesus be revealed don't be a man of God and people are suspecting you whether you are really saved because every revelation your scriptures are wrong your prophecies are wrong the revelation you are sharing is not correct apart go back and walk so in the spirit not for competition but go back and tell yourself in the name of Jesus that any platform that Jesus gives me to reveal his glory I will not go down with shame and reproach shout amen, amen. invest in the word invest in the word number two Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 they gave themselves to the doctrine of the apostles number two fellowship fellowship the Bible says in Psalm 133 it says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity unity is more than just cohesion coming together it's a state in the spirit fellowship fellowship are we together fellowship 
when you invest in fellowship watch this especially the corporate gathering of believers there are many things that happen to you when you are in the house of god that may not happen in your personal secret place let me tell you that sincerely for instance the bible says there the lord has commanded the blessing even life forevermore there's something we call the corporate anointing no matter how in tune you are to the holy spirit you cannot have the experience of the corporate anointing in your personal time with god because the corporate anointing is a sharing of everybody's personal dealings with god made available on the platform of unity that means there is a dimension of experience i don't have with god and if someone who has that dimension comes by the power of unity i can drink of the blessedness of that experience hallelujah unity that you sow into fellowship whether it is convenient or not remember it is a seed it's time to go to church satan you are a liar rain or no rain i'm on my way to the house of god especially that you are a worker this is the year where you throw away flimsy excuses the bible says seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses is that in your bible it says let us lay aside every weight and the seed weight there talk of excuses too if you look for excuses you will always find one and run with perseverance he says the race that is set before us fellowship as a seed so my coming to church so my working in church is a seed keep sowing your reward is coming when it's time to clean the pulpit you are here with joy father thank you for the honor of beautifying your house people will laugh and say oh this church girl i'm sure she thinks she'll get a husband in church don't worry the day god will sort you where he will not if, if god gives you a husband alone that is not even enough you know there are people who represent nations when they looked at two children in her stomach they said there are two nations not two children there are prepared blessings that god can bring people in one day while you are cleaning the place the person who will make you the african director of his company just walks into church and says i'm looking for pastor kingsley I say, oh no he's not around I say okay but you're a diligent lady in the house of god what do you do well i read this and that's not my business the fact that you can walk in the house of god do you have a job say i've never worked since i graduated so you are the one the holy spirit spoke to me about the rewarder when people hear say is that all the story that is all the story it is favor my brother it is favor it's not it's not everything yes sir yes sir are we together if you don't believe what i just told you you are not a christian that means you don't believe god rewards how many of your properties are in lagos but they are as harvests you will never get them because you didn't sow anything in the house of god while you are sowing god will vow a vow with himself because you did this your children will never have to beg for bread again years ago I used to play keyboard for a ministry one of the ministries that went to preach for Basanjo when he was in prison it was my keyboard pastor small keyboard I would carry it the church just they came and opened a branch it was a prison ministry that just started a church service and I would go to a local assembly and when I returned their church their meeting was afternoon meeting I would carry my keyboard and trek to a hotel that they were using my own keyboard I would trek to the hotel set it up you, you know all the things that happen in church this one is frowning this and I would just mind my business and play and go back let me tell you the truth you may have heard me say it in my teachings nobody ever told me thank you i stand before the god of heaven i never knew that one day i'll have an apostolic call 
but they were seeds there were times that it, it i would be so tired you know how church sometimes you know things can happen when you are doing your best and it looks like it's not the only thing i remember was during one time one time they were launching the man of god's cassette and i got one cassette and one bottle of fanta one cassette free i didn't pay for and then one bottle of fanta that's the only thing i can remember getting but i made up my mind that lord if it is for your glory i didn't know that heaven was recording it farmer keep sowing keep sowing keep sowing keep sowing there is nobody who comes out of nowhere please bury that demonic mindset once and for all just because you don't know where they came out from does not mean they did not come. they look let me tell you there are laws god cannot be mocked god cannot trust you with the destinies of men you can deceive men but there are laws in the realm of the spirit there is a strict immigration system you don't bribe your way into certain realms of influence you don't bribe your way into certain levels of honor, notoriety, and grace. There is a track record that God himself vets. So when you see your pastor today and what God is doing in his life, you see when you see masters operate, the proof of mastery is ease. Usually the steps are beyond plain sight. People have so worked their system, they have mastered how it works. So you will be mistaken to think just because it's easy for them, it is easy. It is easy for masters, but not easy. Hallelujah. If I begin to tell you some of the things that we did spiritual, oh dear, this is not the night to discuss this, but let me just tell you the truth. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh corruption. Apostle, but people have annoyed me. This is the year I said, me, I will not keep quiet. Uh -uh. That's why God sent you here tonight. You have done well to sow nice seeds. You want the devil to deceive you now. To cancel everything. Because you want to be yourself. The Bible does not tell us to be ourselves. It tells us to be like Christ. It's a risk being yourself. You better find out what is in yourself before you want to be it. It says we should be like Christ. Paul said in this flesh there is nothing that is good within this flesh. He marked himself and this was his assessment. I hope you understand the concepts of be yourself that I, that I, I'm not saying don't find expression. I just mean that the, 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 the man of the flesh without the assistance of the spirit. I look back today and I thank God for the times of prayer with no reward. There was a time in my life, you would not believe this, where I would buy bread and put granite. You know how you put granite? Don't act like you don't know what I'm saying. Bread and put granite. Are we together? Yeah. With ginger. I think it's a healthy meal. No wonder we are still standing. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that are Hearts always hunger for Hearts always hunger for When we started ministry, sir, I remember the first crusade that we went for. We were going there by faith just because God said to me. While the crusade was going on, you know what it means to preach in a miracle service with bills waiting for you? The people you are owing are there while you are shouting Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
and to make matters worse the sick now genuinely get healed who is that god that heals the sick i remember when that crusade was over and everybody was returning we didn't have the transport to return people but it was a mighty meeting not so much I, I don't think maybe the entire crusade ground may not be more than the people who were seated here but it was with honor and joy what is there to be ashamed of we were starting and with nobility yet yeah, that little thing would be a global ministry that will bless people who has laughed at you who has looked at you and despised your little beginning and you are about to join them to kill that little beginning not knowing that the whole world one day will rejoice at the investment of God's hand upon you let me tell you the truth the pressure that I went through after that crusade it would take a madman to do another one and as soon as we went back I didn't even rest God said to do another one again by the next year I said God what is this I was looking for 150,000 naira to sort some of the people I know you think it's little someone signed a check for me I called the people to come and take it when they came and went to the bank the check bounced and they said this time we're not coming alone you know what that means we're not coming alone I didn't steal I didn't kill what was your offense for your glory I will do Just to see you, to be holy as my name. Listen, it was at those times and within those processes that we saw certain things. My faith did not just develop from Bible study alone. Pain was a gift that stretched that faith. There are things that you go to where no matter how you cry god answers your prayer by leaving you there i know you don't like what i'm telling you now hmm. there are times that you've been left in that situation it's an answer to your prayer god is telling you you are going to be healing nations and now you are in a situation and while you are right there god says stay I'm working on you fear not he says I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine he says when you pass through the waters I will be with you through the rivers he said it will not overwhelm you then he says when you walk through fire you don't run through fire you walk because there are things that fire must roast pride flesh vain glory those are the seeds that you are that you are carrying to go and sow and God says no when you walk through I can do it by myself let's go when you see people starting out in life and they are arrogant don't fight them just leave them there is already a system if it's God they are following something in their life will work on it one day you see the person after five years and he says good afternoon sir. I say what happened uh -huh. the refiner's fire maybe someone is in that season right now you must interpret what you call answered prayer there are many people god answered your prayer from the day you started crying in fact the tears was because the prayer was answered and he said stay there there is something about the nature of man you need to learn if you don't learn this you cannot be a great leader you are going to be birthing nations but there is something naomi I need something there is something you need to know about the faithfulness of God otherwise you will not appreciate the favor that comes from the farm of Boaz God give me Abraham he's making you Sarah now why are you complaining it is only Sarah that can marry Abraham <clears throat> if it is Abraham you want to marry then focus on being Sarah and let me tell you go and read about Sarah it takes more than beauty to be Sarah. Is someone learning? I want to be David. Right. Whoever sits on that throne and last must be David. 
so while you have claimed david god is saying let's go through the training of david and i said lord i don't want that just give me melchizedek or the one you know somebody's training and make magically make me david no be careful what name you ask from the bible because all the names have the requisite the names are harvests you know how you go to a store and you say i like this i like this and forget the price tag there are some things that are so expensive it's a mockery to put price tags there there are cars that you go you don't even touch them have you seen that now you are not allowed at all you don't in fact they have to vet you to allow you get they don't want to destroy the relationships they have with other people so you can see it looking cheap and he said this is cheap i can take on this put this in the basket put this in the basket this little one add it to and then when they make the bill it's more than your house rent that's how life is listen i'm wrapping up most of us love to claim realms and dimensions and harvests uh god mix benny him reinhard bonker atl osborne and a little of billy graham excellent combo and god says let's go after one month you are casting god binding god and say no this fasting is to this can god does not work like this give your car give your houses carry everything and bring it say no way it's not my god the one who died does not behave like that and yet that's the harvest you want i hope i'm not wasting your time lord i want to carry the anointing and grace that brings healing to nations it is available i was told a story years ago maybe this will be the last story and then we'll pray a gentleman i i think it's it's, it's fiction just to explain to illustrate something that this gentleman was frustrated and he said lord serving you does not seem to pay i'm tired of this thing there are no rewards you are blessing other people and other people are suffering you know the monkey they walk baboon they chop thing and then one time he was caught up in the realm of the spirit and i think he went to heaven or something like that then he entered a room that had crosses cross many crosses representing the assignment the mandate and the burden that men carried on earth and then the lord told him okay since you have complained and charged me unfaithful pick whichever one that you want he saw some giant crosses he saw some and then he saw one tiny one that looked like a necklace and he ran quickly to pick it and the lord told him but that's the one you always had you are just picking the same thing that you had and he said this thing so there are people carrying these other ones that those are the ones you are envying on it behind every glory no there is not only a story behind every glory there is a track record of seeds 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 my concern right now is to keep sowing the seeds that make for glory seeds that make for advancement seeds that make for sowing in the spirit i will pray like never before i will fast like never before i will study the word of god like never before let's finish up acts 2:42. they gave themselves continually to number one doctrine the word number two fellowship number three the breaking of bread communion unity breaking of bread there does not just mean communion like holy communion alone it's it's symbolic again an extension of fellowship a state of unity that whatever price you can pay to be at peace with the brethren within the context of the house of God sometimes it is inconveniencing but make sure you never lose capacity to break bread that means you will endure a lot of things you may be misunderstood but you are mandated to break bread and that with a joyful heart and finally he says prayer you sow these seeds the word I'm coming to the house of God 
I live in peace with the brethren. Regardless what is happening in my department, I make up my mind as a revelation that I will not be offended. I will serve whether it's convenient or not. I will give my best, not with hypocrisy and eye service like the Bible admonishes us. You see that? And whilst you are doing that, the Bible says you are sowing to the spirit and it leaves you with an assurance that you will reap life. The fifth seed, of course, that I want to add here is the seed of obedience. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. You are not walking in faith if you are not obedient. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and obey all the commandments which I command you this day. That is the seed. What is the harvest? That the Lord your God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. To obey your pastor. He gives you an instruction and I take this as the voice of God over my life. I will be obedient. Oh, all of you people, church people that they are doing as if they are controlling you. It's a seed. You can choose to sow to the flesh or to the spirit. And the Lord comes to honor you and says, gentlemen, it's time to lift you to the nations. And people will ask you, how did you get here? And you will tell them, by the grace of God, the things that we enjoy today are harvests from the seeds that we have sown. 